up, Juggalos and Juggalettes? It's Juggalotus with Segalovers.net coming here with part five of our JCW charity tour interview series. Our special guest today is none other than the rude boy himself. What's going on, man? How you been? Man, I'm blessed, man. I'm I'm alive. I'm feeling good. It's the Christmas time of the year, my favorite time of the year, and it's just uh, it's it's wonderful to um, be back on with Fago Lovers. Love you guys. You guys are always good to me. And uh, once again, uh, just I'm I'm feeling good. My spirits are up, man. Definitely, it's a great time of year, and you know it's nice to see you guys out there in Michigan uh, throwing out the charity and doing all the things that you do around there to kind of improve the name of our fan base. And uh, we really appreciate that. Um, I wanted to start really back where you started in wrestling. Uh, 19, yes. 1988, you started your in-ring career. Um, that was a long time ago. Um, <laughs> what was it Thanks like? Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> man, I feel just as old as you do. Don't worry, man. What was it like back then? I, I mean, what, what was your first uh, official in-ring uh, experience? Well, my first in- official in-ring experience was I, I did some um, ring announcing um, for a gentleman named Sweet Daddy Malcolm Monroe, who gave me Joe and Joey our starts actually in uh, independent wrestling, and uh, he's he's a guy that I'll forever be in his debt. I love him. I miss him every day. Um, but uh, the times were a whole lot different, brother. I mean, back then you had to pay dues to become involved in wrestling, even to be a ring announcer right. or a manager or a referee. You had to go to school. You had to learn. And then on top of that, it was like uh, the good old boys club back then um, or the mafia. Right. You, you, you weren't just in just because you were in. You had to earn your stripes. You had to earn your way in. And I can remember me and Joe um, taking trips to Fort Wayne, Indiana, which is like five hours from Detroit, six hours. And um, we'd go down there and wrestle, man, and, and we'd get – Sometimes, if we were lucky, we'd get ten bucks, right. and you know, and and uh, there were times where we didn't have enough money to even pay for gas. But that's when you figured out if you had the heart, if you had the love, if you had the determination to be a part of this wonderful sport. And the and the shitty thing is, is nowadays anyone can go on eBay or go on high spots and buy yourself a ring, rent a VFW hall. Name yourself a promotion and say, I'm a wrestler right. without paying any dues or, you know, doing things that you the, the correct way. And um, I don't want to sound like that old man that I keep talking about, but, but damn it, you know, back when I was walking to school, you know, 20 blocks. No, but, but here's the deal, man. You know, um, the guys from our era, we, were, we weren't babied like these guys are now. You know, right. these, guys, these guys are babied. And um, most of these guys that are, are getting into their first match, you know, they're making 50 bucks, you know, in the first match. Right. Then I didn't see 50 bucks until I was in the business for at least five years. <laughs> right. But, you know, but um, I, I'm not, I'm not bitter about the business the way it is. I'm thankful that even still in 2015, I'm in the business. I'm loving it. I'm feeling as young as I've ever felt. Um, you know, I, I, I've taken off a lot of weight and everything. And, you know, I'm trying to stick around for my kids and stuff. And, uh, yeah, man, uh, you know, uh, the, the business has definitely changed. But, you know, it's just like with everything, with music and movies and everything. You know, it's, you know, you gotta, you got to get with the changes. you got to go with the times. And, and that's kind of what I feel like I'm in. For sure, for sure. And, you know, being, you know, I'll say a veteran of the sport, that sounds a lot better than an old guy in the sport. <laughs> Being a veteran in the sport, man, um, I'm sure you've seen your fair share of injuries, especially being a hardcore style wrestler. Um, I talked to Too Tough Tony a little bit about his injuries. What's the worst injury you've suffered in ring? Um, you know, I, I, I had a cracked vertebrae in my neck, which really sucked. I was out for like eight months from that. But, um, oh, and then I, you know, I blew out my knee um, twice a couple times. But really, to be honest with you, I've, I've been fortunate enough not to have um, career ending or career threatening, so to speak, uh, injuries. You know, uh, the guys that I've worked with, you know, are true professionals that have really, you know, taken care of me. And, uh, you know, I like to feel like I've taken care of myself, too. 
Uh, but I had my nose broken four times, which sucked because, <laughs> you know, that that always sucks. That's the hardest thing to heal. Right. Um, but uh, other than that, you know, I mean, um, I've been lucky that I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not in a wheelchair or something, you know, and because uh, oh, sure. I, you know, back when I was younger, I took those crazy, uh, those crazy risks. Um, but you know, I, I mean, the good Lord was with me, I guess. Oh, for sure. Now, you know, we hear a lot about, you know, Joe and Joey's wrestling stuff. You know, the, they're growing yeah. up while watching Hulk Hogan and you know, loving that like aspect of the sport where people had gimmicks, you know, and I grew up in that same era too, to where, you know, you had the warrior and you had the iron Sheik and all these just like legends that are, you know, of course, right. legends are in the business for you who at that point growing up was your, like, like if he came on, you wanted to sit and watch his match regardless of who it well, was. Well, well, I mean, when I was, I was, uh, I'm a lot, I'm a lot older than you, but, um, when I was younger, you know, it was the Sheik, uh, Sabu's uncle, mm-hmm. the original Sheik. I mean, that you know, the guy I got a, a mural tattooed on my back of him. Right. Uh, he was all, he was also a guy that I got to know personally on a personal basis before he passed away, and uh, he was one of those guys that I I was so intrigued by him then because here in Detroit, this man every two weeks, every two weeks, my brother would wrestle at the world famous Cobo Arena. And he would sell out the Cobo Arena, 16,000 seats, every two weeks. And it would be a different opponent every two weeks that would come in to try to take the belt from the Sheik. Right. And let me tell you something. When I watched his old matches now on YouTube, and now that I know what I know now that I've been in the business as long as I have, the man did the same match each and every time. Right. And um, that was the brilliance of it with a guy like him because – he didn't have to kill himself physically. It was a psych, a psychological thing that he could do to the fans right. that made them want to spend their money to see him get his ass kicked. Right. And uh, I was always intrigued by him, and I was always intrigued by. Um, well, you mentioned, you know, um, uh, the Warrior. You know, Ultimate Warrior. He was, mm-hmm. uh, you, you know, it was a spectacle to see. It was like, whoa, man, this guy's, you know, out of left field. Right. Um, another guy, man, you know, um, is uh, Ric Flair, man, the, the greatest of all time to ever step in the ring. And unfortunately, I hate to see when you when you see him doing things on WWE these days, because that's that's just a, a shell of what Ric Flair used to be. Definitely. You know, um, Ric Flair. I mean, man, when that guy would walk into a room, man, the whole fucking place would light up. Oh, and. Uh, and right now, you know, he seems like that old man that's just hanging around, and I hate to see that, man. It's 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 really heartbreaking. Uh, but guys like that, you know, um, you know, the Road Warriors, seeing those guys is like, whoa, what the hell's going on, you know? And um, but but I've been blessed to to be around a lot of those guys too. So you know, um, uh, meeting some of your your idols and stuff like that, and even getting to wrestle some of them is pretty cool. For sure. When I was growing up, man, the Road Warriors were where it was at. And I, I remember being, I want to say 22, 23, I was working, well, maybe it was a little younger than that, working security. And WWF came in before they changed the WWE. And uh-huh. uh, the Road Warriors were going to be in the building. It was before, you know, Hawks Demise. And, you know, um, I, I was telling my boss, man, I'd love to meet them. Is there any way I could be backstage to meet these guys? And, uh, all of a sudden, he's like, yeah, just, he's like, come out here and wait, and I'll go see. All of a sudden, this dude comes down the hallway, and he he took the hall from one side to the other. It's the biggest dude I've ever <laughs> seen in my life, and it was Animal. And he came uh-huh. out, and he talked to me for about 15, 20 minutes, and I was just starry-eyed. It, it was phenomenal. you know. Very but cool. As a tag team, that was where it was at. For me, Sting. That that was my Oh, ultimate. Sting, man. Oh, yeah. hands down. Sting. You know, and, and Sting, Sting to this day, you know, um, I hate the way that the WWE played him, oh, yeah. uh, making him uh, um, job out the way he did, even at WrestleMania and, and when he did the other deal that he did. It was it was straight bullshit, man. And what it was to me is to show that um, that they still had the power to make a guy, you know, a guy whose uh, um, uh, his legacy is just amazing, Definitely. you know, and um, and a guy who never sold out, you know, when everybody else was jumping ship, he never. He never left his company, man, and I respect that. And, um, you know, when we were with WCW back in, you know, during the Nitro days and stuff, mm-hmm. I would travel with ICP. And um, Sting would always have cool things to say to me, man, you know, and uh, I always I always take that to heart, you know. And, um, 
he was he was always cool to me. You know, a lot of people didn't like him, right. but um, you know, a lot of people don't like me. <laughs> right, <laughs> so, right. Whatever. Well, you know, the funniest thing about Sting, uh, his last match when he hurt his neck. Um, yeah. I was actually traveling the next day, and I was in Dallas's airport um, on a layover, and I've never met Sting in my life. Um, but he's always been my wrestler. Like that was the one guy sure. and I was eating in a fast food, like one of the little fast food stops. I turn around and there was Sting. Wow. And I walked up and I'm like, you're Sting. And he's like, yeah, here I am a 36 year old man geeked the fuck out right. and the next to Sting, bro. And I was like, would you mind if I took a picture with you? Cause I knew his neck was hurt. You know, sure. I was like, how's your neck doing? And he's like, oh, I don't know, MRIs. And I was like, well, I hope, you know, it gets better. You know, if that was yeah. the last time we saw you, you know, know that you're a legend to me. You know, here I yeah. am, gray beard, 36 years old, geeking the fuck out. And I got There's my picture wrong with Sting. Either, brother. Oh, I got my picture with Sting. And, dude, the first thing I did was call my wife and go, you will not believe who the fuck I just saw in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I know what you're saying about meeting your, meeting your idols and meeting those legends. Sure. What is it like for you now? to be one of those idols and one of those legends within the juggalo community. You you know, you know, I'll be honest with you. Um, uh, I take that to, to real heart. You know, I, I, I really do. Um, you know, to leave the legacy that I'm, I, I, I assume that I'm leaving. It means a lot to me. It, it, you know, it means that all these scars all over my body and everything is, is not in vain. You know, when people, you know, when, when especially young guys come up and they say, man, rude boy, you know, you know, I, I really idolize you and, and I looked up to you and, you know, I'm a juggalo and I want to do what you do and everything. And back in the day, I used to deny that and say, no, nah, man, go to school, go do something else. And, but you know what? Now I say, you know what? Live your dream. Enjoy it, man. I mean, because I did. And I'm living proof that you can do that. And I got to tell you, when I hear um, the uh, the Juggalo chants and I hear um, the Rudy's Rudy's, I, that, you know, there, there's been times where I'd be in the ring and you wouldn't even know what this is, but man, I'd have a tear in my eye just knowing that people care for me like that. You know, I'm just a kid from Southwest Detroit, man, who just happened to be um, happened to be in the right place at the right time, and and. I hope that I, I, I've been able to touch some people. And by the, the reaction of the um, juggalos, I feel like I have, you know, and uh, that means a lot to me, you know, and, and, and it also means a lot to me to show juggalos that, you know, um, I, again, I was just a dreamer once upon a time, and dreams do come true, man, as long as you fucking fulfill them on your own. Because it's not going to, uh, no one's just going to come up to you and say, hey, here, there you go, man. Um, here's the main event of Bloody Mania. Go on and get in there. No, you got to work your ass off to be in that position. Right. You know, and um, again, uh, it means it means the world to me that um, that I'm looked up to like that. And and you know, um, I, and I say that humbly. I, I really do. I say that as a humble man. I'm um, saying, you know, uh, I thank those who do that, and I thank uh, those who bring the signs and. You know, like I said, all the chants and everything, it, it, I take it to heart, my brother. I really do. And um, sometimes, you know, uh, us wrestlers, we could be too machismo and all oh, thinking that we're all that. But you know what, man? I stand up and piss just like every other man does. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? I've got to wipe my ass, too, when I'm done using the toilet, <laughs> you know? Right. And, and, and again, for someone to say, man, you've made an impact on my life and I've really enjoyed what you've done, I've been, you've entertained me. That right there, brother, means the world to me. Very, very much, man. I mean, and and from the fan side of perspective, you know, uh, being at the gathering of the Juggalos, uh, seeing what JCW does, seeing how humble everybody on Psychopathic is, um, they take the time to hang out with the fans and take the time to shake the hands and dap the hands and sign the autographs. And, you know, from a fan perspective, that means the world to us. You know, um, I don't think you guys, especially, well, maybe you do, um, understand the impact you've had on us. You know, you know I once, I'm sorry for cutting you off, but once, once upon a time, I didn't realize it. And until all these years later, my brother, all these years later, when I'm watching juggalos have kids and their, their kids having kids and, uh, you know, and, and, and 
then I see the, the, the way that this, the, the whole Juggalo universe has revolved and still the appreciation that we, we are shown, um, I take it to heart. And, and let me tell you something. Anyone who's met me <clears throat> at the gatherings and stuff, they'll tell you, no matter what I'm doing, if you stop me, you want to talk to me, you want to have a beer, you want to take a picture, boom, I'm there for you. Because it's an honor that someone would like to talk to Rudy Hill. That means a lot to me. And uh, I, I love it, man. I love it. I can't wait to get on, on this tour. And, and this tour is something that, you know, we know that Psychopathic, we know JCW, you guys always do enough to reach out for charity. And like I said in the beginning, give, give Juggalos kind of a good name and a good image. Um, when this tour was put together, um, and they, were, they called you, they said, hey, Rudy, we want you on this tour. Did you hesitate? Did you say, oh, let me check my schedule? Or were you like, fuck, no, I'm there? Well, well, the, well, the thing was is that um, I had, uh, because uh, DJ Carlino and myself, we own, um, we own a DJ uh, business and a DJ uh, productions. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of holiday parties booked. And immediately, man, I just called Carlito right, right at, while I was on the phone with Kevin Gill. I was on another phone with Carlito, texting him, telling him, cancel out everything because I'm leaving. And, um, or we can reschedule those other things because when it comes to the kids, this is what we do, you know. And, and, and Carlito and I, you know, like I just got done telling you before we got on, on live right here, um, that's why it's been a, a, a kind of hectic few days for us because we are constantly not just um, doing with the, the, the Wrestle Rap uh, uh, Festival, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, Carlito and I, we are always out on the streets here in Detroit feeding homeless and uh, uh, doing toy drives. We just did a toy drive and a, and a uh, 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 gloves and um, winter hats uh, drive a couple nights ago, which was really successful, and we we're really blessed to be a part of that. And so when – Kevin called me and he was like, Hey, here's the deal. This is what we're looking to do. I mean, before he could even finish his sentence, I, I said, call me in, call me in a hundred percent. And then I seen like a, um, like a press release and it said, yeah, you get all of these different brackets for the different, um, packages that you buy for charity. Right. And one of them was, uh, the meet and greet with, um, I think it was weed man and ICP and, uh, KG. And I immediately called KG, and I was like, what the fuck, man? And he was like, what's up, Rudy? I was like, why the fuck ain't I in that? <laughs> and he was like, oh, shit, bro. I was like, you're damn right. I want to do all of that. I want to be a part of all of that. For sure. And uh, he was like, oh, man, thanks a lot. I was like, no, man. When I say we're going out, we're going out all the way, you know? I want to be a part of all of that. So now, I mean, with the, the way that they've restructured the whole tour, as this festival, uh, it looks as though everybody's going to be a part of the meet and greet and everything. So, yep. you know, um, I, I wasn't I wasn't doing it on an ego tip. I was doing it on a giving tip that hey, I want to be a part of that too. You know, and right. once again, man, immediately when I was called, I said, man, you know what? Let's do it. Let's go out there. Let's kick some ass. And what a better time right before Christmas, you know, that we could bless some children at a hospital. You know, I mean, those are the things that we should be living for. And you know how you say that we make the juggalos look good? The juggalos make themselves look good, brother, when they buy those tickets and they come out and they give, you know, and they, and, and they pass along those blessings, you know? We just happen to be the, 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 with the key to open the doors. Once the doors are open, all the juggalos, we just flood it, and we just show the world. We all show the world that we are better than what you perceive us to be because we have tattoos or because we paint our faces or because we act a little wild. At the end of the day, we are good, loving, caring people. Definitely. definitely. And I stand by that. And that, that's something that I know that Joe, Joey, the whole team over there has been pushing hard. Um, once that, you know, gang list came out, I, it was immediate. They were like, fuck that. You know, that's not who we are. Um, well, yeah, because because we could have easily just sat back and said, well, we just blow it off. But when there's juggalos losing their jobs and they're losing their children right. and they're losing, you know, now it's personal. Right. Now it's personal. You know, if you if you call us a bunch of fuck-ups, that's fine. 
because you're not messing with no one's livelihood then. Right. But when you're starting to mess with people's livelihoods and their families, then there's a fucking problem. That's when we got to go to war. And, and, and everybody said, oh, you can never win. But guess what? As long as you stand up and fight, they know not to fuck with you next time. Right. And that's a win definitely from the get-go. Um, I think, Amen. I think it made a profound statement to the rest of the world. You know, I mean, we've seen, you know, bands in the past get kind of have to go to court, Two Live Crew being a big one. And I, I know that they're, you know, good friends of you guys as well. But, right. you know, to have you guys constantly under scrutiny, constantly under, you know, the eye of everybody and be the most hated group. I wouldn't even say band anymore. I'll say group because Juggalos, we're a family. You know this. That's you right. Know, That's right. I, I was at the gathering. I went to one gathering. You were hosting a night. And you're right. You know, they, they chant the Rudies. They chant the Twisted. They chant the ICPs. You yeah. Know, but it's all love. Yeah. And then that's something yeah. that you don't find anywhere else. And, um, you know, and the thing is, brother, is that the media, they allow that to get out of hand as well. The incident with the juggalo in some part of the country, they immediately point out that it's a juggalo. Right. But, but let it be a juggalo who is feeding someone the homeless or they're clothing someone who happens to be down on their luck. They do not once put that in the media spotlight. Well, we did Juggalo Day here last year in Detroit, and we raised, listen, 20,000 cans of food wow. for the homeless. 20,000. Do you think the media once said, pat on the back, guys, good job? They just swept it under the rug, which is cool. Right. Because the real givers are the ones that don't look for recognition. Exactly. They just do the deal. And that's what we're here for, man. Exactly. Now, getting back into wrestling a little bit. Um, sure. You were the JCW champ for 124 days combined. I sure 124 was. 124 days. What, you know, you talk about having pride in being a juggalo, pride in representing the fan base. As a champ, you represented that fan base for the wrestling community. Um, yes. When you go into matches, did you go into it with a little bit more emphasis when you had the belt, or is it always the same as far as your um, – uh, what am I looking for? Like your drive to be putting on the best performance possible. Sure, I, I know what you're saying. Let me tell you something. When, when, I, when I held that belt and um, promoters would call me, I would definitely – you know, I, my, my bookings sure as hell went up. Right. And um, I was, <clears throat> excuse me, blessed to go around and defend that title. But when I did, in any promotion that I went to, I made sure that, look, you have to respect this belt when I come in. Right. You have to respect it. You, have, you know, I demand that, you know. And um, here's the deal. I always have heart for what I do when it comes to the ring. I always have and always will whether it be juggalos or just wrestling fans that come out and see me and support me. But when I had that belt around my waist, let me tell you something, my brother. There wasn't, I had a shine about me. I had a feeling about me that was overwhelming. I was, I was happy that I got to carry the torch and take that belt around the, around the globe. And um, every time, even we were doing like um, wrestling conventions and, and autograph signings and stuff, I made sure, man, that belt was on me everywhere I went, man, because I wore it with pride. Right. Everywhere I went, even when we were doing some charitable stuff, aside from Psychopathic, aside from JCW, we would be doing charitable uh, um, things, functions in the Detroit area, in uh, Chicago and Cleveland and stuff. And I would make sure every time you know that the JCW World Heavyweight Champion was doing this. Right. Before Rude Boy, <laughs> this was the champion, the guy who was representing the belt. Right. And also, let me also state this, that I wore that belt with pride. When I came to a, a, a building, my brother, anyone will tell you, I came in in a suit and tie because I had my belt with me because I'm the world's heavyweight champion. Right. And I didn't take that lightly at all. There were several nights I would show up at venues and Juggalos would be like, what the fuck is he wearing? 
heck, I was like, you know what? Why can't we have that same pride for our championship that other guys did? And let me tell you something that has a lot to do with Ric Flair. Because whenever I seen him outside the ring, the man was always dressed to the nine. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? He was defending his company. He was defending his belt. And that's the exact same thing that Rude Boy did. And I was proud to wear it. And um, I was uh, thankful that I was a champion for 120-something days. Yeah, it was definitely uh, one of the highlights of, you know, the Juggalo world, having Rude Boy have it. Because you're one of the OGs in our community, man. And that's yeah, that's something that, you know, it, it's nice to see. Now, the current champ is Weed Man, JCW. Yeah. Who's going to take the belt off him? Oh, <laughs> that's, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, weed man. I love weed man. Um, I, I'm, I don't, I, <laughs> that, that's a tough one. If anyone's got a shot at it, if anyone's got a shot at it, I mean, there's, there's a few names that you could throw in the pot. One of them is too tough. Tony, a oh, former sure. champion, you know, kick ass. I'll tell you one time, one night, man, I defended the title against Tony and, uh, it was in, uh, in Indiana. And, uh, man, we tore the fucking house down. It was one of the best matches I ever had in my 20 something years of wrestling, brother. It was one of the most exciting matches that I had. The jugglers were loving it. It was awesome. That guy took me to the, to the, um, end uh, and, you know, fortunately, I got the one, two, three. But I got to tell you, man, Tony was awesome in the ring being in there with him. He's one guy, I think, that, that could definitely take the title. Congo Kong. Congo Kong is uh, a monster. Okay. And he's only 20-something years old. And he's about to take the wrestling world by storm. You know, he's an amazing competitor. And uh, he's one of the guys that I would say could, could easily take the belt. Okay. And, you know, I mean... And, and for, I mean, for shits and giggles, you can also throw Rude Boy's name in that pile. <laughs> I mean, for sure, for sure. you know, he is a former champion. So, I mean, I never caught myself out. And, you know, um, Weed Man is my brother. But, you know, sometimes even with your brother, you got to get it on with, you know. <laughs> when, when, when it comes down to the, the, the gold, the glory of the gold. <laughs> Definitely. Everybody wants that strap, man. Now, we, yeah, oh yeah. we've seen an uptick with female competitors in wrestling. Yes. Um, I know back in the 80s, 90s, they were eye candy. That was their purpose. Yes. Even when they were wrestling, it was eye candy, lingerie matches, bullshit like that. Yeah, most of them sucked. Yeah, most of them sucked. And now we're seeing an uptick of actual wrestling. And we're seeing girls like Paige, like Mary Dobson and JCW – um, Becky Lynch, we're seeing a real huge uptick in females I can throw down. Um, yes. From your perspective, is that a positive upswing? And will we see that same kind of upswing within JCW where we bring in more female competitors to have matches? I, you know, I would like to see it. You know, I, I, I really would. You know, I mean, I love Crazy Mary, um, but uh, I'd, I'd like to see some other uh, some other competitors you know, other than her wrestling JCW, you know, right? Um, because I, to be honest with you, I think Crazy Mary is about to blow up bigger than any female that's that's ever wrestled, and I mean that. Right. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. She's been doing all those matches down at NXT. Yep. And I feel like um she is uh um she is a uh, a bomb that's about to explode, and uh, when she does, um the world better get ready because she is one chick that can fucking go. And I'm proud to say that she's a friend. I'm proud to say that I know her. Um, but as far as uh, women in, in JCW, and yeah, I, I think it, it would be an awesome thing. You know, and, and even if you went and you seen like the, um, the uh, exotic women of wrestling last year at the um, gathering, mm -hmm. the, the wrestling was, was the mainstay of it, not the exotic part. Right. You know, so when you got there, you got to see some pretty cool Women really go out there and work their asses off. And, and uh, a lot of them, man, you know, they work circles around the guys. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And, and and that's definitely where a lot of fans, I think, are seeing something that they've never seen before. I mean, when I was, you know, watched WWF, it was China. That was, that was a female competitor. And, right. you, know, you know, she was ballsy. <laughs> but, right. you know, um, 
getting back to the charity tour that you guys are going out on. Yes. <clears throat> uh, what kind of – are we going to see some uh, shoot matches from Rude Boy? Are we going to see some what, – what are we going to see out of you out there on that tour? You know, <clears throat> it depends on who they got there and me and their list. Everybody that they've announced on the tour, wrestling-wise, competitive-wise, I respect each and every one of them. I really, truly do. I don't say that lightly. I'm not saying that to kid be a kiss-ass because one thing that you can always say about Rude Boy, he does not give a fuck. Sometimes he says shit that gets him in trouble. Right. But I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Those guys that are on there, I think each and every one of them deserve to be on there. I think that um, whoever I get in there with, they'll know that they've been in there with Rude Boy. One guy, of course, that I always love to wrestle, and I think that the fans love it because we always bring it, and we always bring like a, a, a legend fact to the JCW ring, and that's my, my blood brother, uh, Madman Pondo. You know, He's a guy that I could, I could wrestle him every single night, 20 nights in a row, even though it would feel like I wrestled him 20 years in a row because the way that we beat the shit out of each other. Right. But we do it both. We both do it for the love of the juggalos. And I love when I can work with someone like that that understands that. And um, that man Pondo's taught me a lot, man. You know, I've been in the business a whole lot, a, a whole long time. But that man Pondo has taught me a lot. And um, in, seriously, in the last... I'd say in the last five years, man, you know, and even you can teach an old dog some new tricks. And that man, he has, uh, he's a brother that um, I, I love him. And again, you know, he's, he's taught me how to take care, better care of myself in the ring mm -hmm. and how to be a little bit more responsible. And uh, like I said, even this old dog learned some new tricks from a brother of mine, Madman Pondo. Now, does that say that if me and Pondo get in the ring that we ain't going to get it on like we always do with thumbtacks, barbed wire, uh, razors? Yes, we'll do that. Right. But but I want everyone to know that I respect the man and I love him. And uh, I thought it was really cool. I got to tag team for the first time ever. I got to tag team with Madman Pondo back at Hollow Wicked. Um, here in Detroit against uh, the Nerds, the Revenge of the Nerds. Mm -hmm. And it was so fucking great. I got the tag team with Madman Pondo, and uh, we've never done that before, so that was pretty cool. But, um, uh, yeah, he's, he's one of the guys I'd love to wrestle. And anybody on the tour, anybody, I'm, I'm down, I'm down. And i got to tell you this, every city that I go to, you can bet your ass that you're going to get 100% from Rude Boy each and every night. Dope. And now you guys are doing... I might be a little drunk, but it's okay, man. <laughs> I don't know. I you know, a lot of you guys, uh, you know, get along that's why, pretty that, heavy, so... That's, that's why me and Tony get along so well. <laughs> yeah, he said... He, he loves... He, lo he, he, lo he loves his Jack Daniels, and I love my Hennessy. So there you go. Yeah, yeah. He, Tony said he was <laughs> doing free shots on the tour, so uh, anybody else knows <laughs> <out for> that. <laughs> now, this tour is the Russell Rap Charity Tour. Um, benefits are going to the St. John Children's Hospital um, in Illinois, I believe. I think so, yep. Um, not only are people going to see wrestling, they're going to see your brothers ABK, Hoodoo, Young Wicked, a lot of the musical performances, Violent J doing a solo joint from what I hear. Violent J doing a solo? Why are you kidding me? That right there? <laughs> Seriously, this is an old cliche that you always heard in wrestling. But my friends, that right there is worth the price of admission in itself. You'll never see it again. So why not get out there on some uh, charitable stuff and see Violent J do a solo show, man? That that right there was mind blowing when they announced it at, on the Juggalo show the other night. I, mind blowing, brother. I'm yeah. sorry I cut you off, but no, it's good, man. Like he's doing a solo joint, and his boy or his brother Jump Steady is going to be hyping him. From what I oh, hear, oh yeah, and I mean that. I agree with you 100. percent That is reason alone to come and show this love on this tour. But yes. back to the main reason, it's for the kids, man. And you know we appreciate everything that you do for the community. We appreciate everything oh, you're doing for the kids. You know, despite what anybody might negatively say about you specifically, Jay specifically, Shag <laughs> specifically, whatever. We got love for like you, this, man. This, 
they like to point us out, but guess what, man? You know, at the end of the day, I can look myself in the mirror and say, you know what, Rudy, you're not a bad guy, man. You're all right, you know. Yeah, and sure. and if I can look at my children and my family and and them look at me without any kind of um, shame, then I know I've done a good job. And you know, um, through my faith in God, you know, um, it, it's kept me here. Um, and I still have a purpose to uh, show love and spread love. I mean, that's one of the things that Jesus taught us is that, you know, to uh, spread that love, man, you know, and wh whatever your religious beliefs are, even if you don't believe, right. uh, you know that there's a higher calling that has got you here, and um, it got us all together. And there's a reason that we're all together, and that's to look out for one another. And even if those one another's are strangers on the street, Someone has to look out for, for the people, and uh, you know if if we all had that same mentality, just think about how cool this world would be. It would definitely be a lot better place, man. Look, Rudy, I appreciate you taking time out of your Sunday, away from football, away from everything else, away from the chair. Man, my Eagles are winning, bro. Dude, your Eagles my won. They won. Yeah, they did. No, they didn't. They did. They won thirty-five to twenty-eight. Oh my God! Oh, <laughs> oh my God! We, we we couldn't get the, we couldn't get it up here in Detroit on TV, and me and Carlito kept going on our phones and trying to see who's winning. Oh, that's great news, man! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey, man, that, man. Was, that just made my night. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you took time out away from your Eagles game and away from checking the <laughs> scores to chat with me, man. Anybody, anybody, anybody at the cities are going to um, check them out. Come out and show the love for not only the performers, but mainly for the kids, man. Everything made on this tour is going to the St. John's Children's Hospital of Illinois. 100% um, of the proceeds, they said, is, is going to charity. Um, there's oh, yeah. no no harm in, in coming out. And hell, uh, KG even told me there was a guy in the UK that bought a package. He's not going to show up at the show. He was worried about if his tickets were not going to be able to be given to somebody else. He bought the tickets to give to charity, and he told him to oh. give the ticket to somebody else. So nice. it's shit like that that makes the Juggalo community great. It's people like you guys that make the Juggalos stand out and look good. Juggalos make the family look good. But you guys stand in front of us and, and take bullets, and we appreciate that from all of you. Man, it's been a pleasure talking to you. It really has. Please be safe out there uh, going down the highways, you know, styling yeah. and profiling, as Ric Flair would say, <laughs> doing your thing. And know that you represent us proud, and we are very proud to have you in the family, homeboy. I thank you very much for the time to be here. I'm very humbled by this. I'm very thankful for every time that I get a chance to talk to you guys at Fango Lovers. You guys have been nothing but love since day one, since I've met all of you guys. And, again, I'm, I'm very humbled by the, this. And, uh, once again, I, I just invite everyone to come on out, enjoy yourselves. Again, like you said, man, Violent J, JCW, Young Wicked, ABK, Big Hoodoo, Willie D of the Ghetto Boys, the oh, legendary man. Ghetto oh, Boys. Oh, my God, man, this is just nuts. And, again, all the charity, all the um, proceeds going to charity, it, it's it's special time. It's Christmas time. It's feeling good. And, uh, hey, brother, my fucking Eagles just beat the New England Patriots, man. <laughs> That's a Christmas gift right there, right? <laughs> hey, man, brother. All right, man, Merry Christmas to you and yours. Please be safe, and we look forward to talking to you soon. Merry Christmas. God bless you. God bless you, Juggalos. Love you. Fuck you, wicked clowns. We're like the same with time.